On this virtual visit, we're going to look at the way the female figure appears in modernist works by male artists, Milton Avery, Charles White, and Henry Moore, and how they all utilize the female figure in their work. Female figure has appeared in traditional artwork prior to the modernist period. So we're starting with Milton Avery. He was creating works, this is Susan with Orchid in 1944, but his earlier works, they had maybe landscapes or figures, usually female figures in them. And that was because he was painting what he knew, what was around him all the time. Challenged him during this period of time was being the sole supporter for this large family oftentimes meant he had to take day job and paint at night or take a night job in order to paint during the day. So Milton Avery's problem with money was not just individual. It was happening for everyone because it was the Great Depression. He was telling a rather large group of Americans that normalcy was going to come back and he was using different stylistic choices, making people feel better than what they were feeling during that time, during the Depression. He did that because he had been so influenced by artists such as Matisse. You can see that very clearly. If you know Matisse's work and you look at this piece, there are very similar approaches. You'll see the contour of the figure takes a very curvy kind of line all the way around. So the subject matter has this very sort of exciting but soft curvy line all the way around describing it and yet it's sort of balanced by that horizon line that breaks up the two gold colors in the back that's something that matisse might have done and he might have looked at the way that pattern would appear in these sort of flattened shapes but he's very concerned with color relationships and what ends up happening is that in Avery creating a very familiar and for many Americans uh, a comforting subject matter such as the female figure, he can then experiment with what happens when you place this sort of sea green color on top of a very warm gold. You get a very push-pull relationship and those colors start to play. And don't even get me started about these orange socks. So you'll see his use of color becomes his place where he's experimenting as a modern artist. The flatter his shapes become and the less detail he creates, the more we pay attention to color. This figure might not be the symbol of liberty or freedom or the goddess of love. This may be an ant a friend, a wife, and brings us a little more closer to the work in an accessible way. He becomes part of a great influencer of artists that then go on to become very notable in our post-Second World War abstract expressionists. So that brings us to Charles White. He is also a modern artist, a Black American modern artist, who's working during the Depression. Now, many times his opportunities to create work is because of the Works Progress Administration and the new jobs that were offered to artists and artisans during that period of time as part of the New Deal. So here you have an example of Charles White, and he was an African-American artist who he used narrative work. He particularly focused in on the female figure. In some ways, Avery has a little bit more room to experiment with things like color and shape and tone. Charles White's female figure might be showing more strength through pain, more experience through life, and you'll see the decisions that he makes are to help you get to that place emotionally. So this figure has not very many curvy lines like we saw on Avery. We just see this one here. The rest of the figure 
is completely described in straight lines. And some of these straight lines appear, so the differences between where the light hits her and where it does not are exaggerated by yet another straight line. This blocky approach, you start to feel like she's sitting there, it's titled Awaiting His Return, and she could be sitting there for quite some time. What this is a reference to, we think, is with the star behind her, she may be waiting for a soldier, a son, or a husband to return from World War I who has earned a gold star. And you also have a bit of a more realistic and harbinger of what that soldier has to come home to. He has to continue to be strong and he has to be prepared to continue to fight, even though he's finished fighting in a war. The technology of what he's using to create this artwork, there is no color that he's using. This is a lithograph, which means he's drawn on a stone or a plate with a greasy marker, and that marker creates that drawing. Then he can treat it, put a piece of paper on it, and run it through a press and make multiple impressions of it. It's a printmaking process. And that made his work more accessible or easy for his audience to buy it or have it or have it in their homes. Um, they weren't having to compete with other artists who might be needing to charge a lot more money for their paintings. So here we have our final modern artist. He's from England. He's Henry Moore. And this is actually a maquette or a model for a larger sculpture. Used to seeing Henry Moore sculptures maybe outside of a museum or in a public space. And he tends to take the female form and really abstract it. The female form reclined. That's a pose he often uses. He likes the, the sort of horizontal aspect of it. The negative shapes and the positive shapes start to have a relationship. So when we were looking at Avery's work, where that sea green was sort of fighting with the gold background and having that sort of interesting play, Henry Moore is experimenting in the same way with positive and negative spaces in his sculptures. His response to what was going on during that same period of time, he felt like visually his art needed to go back to a place that was primitive, that interacted with us in a way that didn't have a lot of narration. This is a female figure. That's what we recognize and that's what we're appealing. That's what our eye is connecting with. He enjoys taking that female figure and creating a recognizable form that he can start to play with. And yet we still see something very recognizable. So in the same way that Milton Avery is using the female figure to comfort or give us something recognizable during a difficult period of time, Henry Moore is sort of turning to the female figure in that way. It's not quite a direct relationship like here's the depression and here's a bunch of positive images. He is drawn to the female figure in a similar way. It gives him a sense of comfort and universality. The way that we talked about Charles White, everyone can recognize the female figure. So you may encounter one of his reclining figures out in a public space and be able to walk around and experience them. Maybe from one angle, it doesn't even look like a figure anymore. But as you come around, there it is again. And that experience draws us together in a way that abstraction does. It's not telling a specific story as who this person might be. It draws us together because we recognize the same thing. What's interesting is that prior to the modern age, there's nuances in posing a model. So it may take years and centuries for an artist to survive scandal if his model was facing in a certain direction. In a public space, can walk all the way around this sculpture and see the human figure, see a female figure, 
and not be in fear of interpreting some sort of improper feeling from it. She's not trying to seduce you. She's not trying to tempt you. She may not even be trying to comfort you. Her intention is completely removed from it. And that was the result that he was looking for in making his work more primitive. The three artists have in common is actually something unexpected. It's Mexico. All three artists, Milton Avery takes his family on a vacation to Mexico. He starts to see the way the colors are represented. He starts to see the natural landscapes and marketplaces where different patterns and colors are being represented. And that informs his work. He almost becomes a modern and folk artist all wrapped up in one. The way that the colors and the simplified shapes really are inspired by that experience in Mexico. Charles White created his print during a stay in Mexico because he was married to an African-American sculptor who had close ties with Mexican artists and they lived down there for some period of time together. And that addition that he made of those lithographs were made in Mexico. And he was very much inspired by a lot of political discussion that was going on that had more of a socialist or communist feel. And that imagery that was associated with those political movements often had that, that kind of strong blockier feel that may be evident in that piece we looked at. And Henry Moore, also visited Mexico and was drawn by carvings that he would find, ancient carvings that prehistoric Mexican cultures were creating. And that simplified form was really what drew him to creating many of his reclined nudes that he did. Thank you for taking this virtual visit to the Susquehanna Art Museum and the Modernists, Witnesses of the 20th Century. For more information on any upcoming programs at the museum or for exhibitions currently on view, please visit our website, www.susquehannaartmuseum.org.